but I almost forgot this one. We'll put this up. If you have friends who don't happen to be on internet because they don't have power right now uh, or something, uh, you know, share with them. This will be out there. The district will put it up and uh, we'll put it up on our website so you, people can come back and see this presentation. So welcome everybody and here we go. I, uh, I need to share my screen here. Okay, so we'll start again. Well, I did this last week, but some people, if you haven't been on, um, this will just help to understand the difference between structured and independent. We'll do a couple check-ins per day. It might be two, it might be three, it could be up to four depending on their schedule uh, because uh, especially at the high school, there's just more flexibility in the scheduling. So it depends on how many classes they have. But if they're in structure, they'll be they'll be coming into Zoom with teachers to answer questions, ask questions, listen to other kids, ask questions, uh, community have some social time with kids, discussion, um, that kind of thing in a Zoom classroom. Um, they the they'll have some kind of schedule. We're going to put that in the uh, uh, similar to what the schedule is for their home school. So the middle school schedule will follow something along the lines of that and the same thing with the high school because we are using instructors out of the middle school and high school one period to instruct in the in their area of expertise for options um then we have um we'll have the uh, lessons in each subject matter that are assigned typically by the edgenuity program which is our online curriculum um and if, if there's somebody to help kids Make sure that they're on uh, track, especially at the six, seven, eight level during the day. That would be helpful um, just to have somebody around to help keep them moving forward in that in that structured program. If they're on the independent program, then they may not be on a normal, uh, you know, eight to three schedule for school. They may be on some other schedule. It might not even necessarily be on. Uh, you know, Tuesday through Friday, it could be Monday through Thursday, or they could they could spend more time on the weekend, although there will be a check-in. So we do have a uh, an attendance component. The state requires uh, a check-in for every class each day, or we have to mark them absent. So that'll be uh, one of the pieces on the independent. A check-in can be an email to an instructor. It can be turning in an assignment. It can be a chat. It can be a phone call um any of those things can be a drop in um, any of those things are a check-in um, just logging into the curriculum is not but logging in and looking at one of the videos on the curriculum or doing some activity spending time at all on it is a check-in so they have to have that for each class tuesday through friday somehow in that in the 24 hours of tuesday they have to have some kind of check-in uh anyway so for independent they can kind of set their schedule they can work at their own pace uh although they still have to get done we're expecting them to get done by the end of the semester with the curriculum um they may go faster uh and some have asked well what happens if they get done really early uh if 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 the first two weeks they pre-test out of things then uh you know maybe they they will put them in the next level up and they can start there instead. Um, or if they get done a month early, we could start them on the next semester uh, and then we won't actually technically register them until a month later when the next semester actually starts. So um, we can help uh, facilitate moving kids along in subjects in particular on the independent side. Uh, in the middle, we're going to use, we'll use technology that we have Chromebooks available and there and there were questions already in the last meeting for elementary. Uh, they bumped the Chromebook checkout to next week. The district is coming out with a new schedule, should be out by tomorrow on the district website. And uh, I'm hoping it'll be out by tomorrow on the district website. I know they have a, temp they have a, 
a uh, tentative schedule that they've made up for next week. So they'll be finalizing that and getting that out. Um, uh, all the teachers are licensed. Uh, we will have IAs available also for support during the day. They, uh, they turn their assignments in in our online curriculum. They get graded, they get looked at. Some of them will get looked at by the teachers. Some of them are graded by the actual program itself, depending on the nature of the assignment. If it's a writing assignment, for example, then that would be graded by the teacher. Uh, they can come in in person, uh, whether they're structured or independent. They can make an appointment, they can call in, they can come in, there'll be office hours, and uh, they can talk to their teacher, they can connect. Um, Okay, moving along here. This is what we're expecting our daily schedule to be. Um, within this daily schedule, there will be a Zoom schedule and it may get adjusted if the schools go back to brick and mortar, our options kids don't go back to brick and mortar, they stay with options uh, and uh, they will go they, they may have to adjust the schedule because the brick and mortar might change their schedule uh, during the day. So we're anticipating that. For now, this is kind of the time frame we're looking at for a daily schedule. It'll be inside that time frame for a Zoom. And uh, uh, this, I will post this on the uh, options website. It's not currently there, but I'll get it up there in the next day or so. Uh, we will have Chromebook handout if they have their own device, that is fine. Um, as long as it can, uh, a phone is a little awkward, it's a little bit small, but it, uh, you can use a phone, it just not doesn't work as well. Um, better to have a computer to work on of some kind. Here is just a, ba a few basic rules to keep the computer away from food and drink, especially if it's one of ours, uh, you don't want to be uh, negligent with it. So uh, keep food and drink away, keep it away from heat and moisture and dirt, dust, power it off, plug it in at the end of the day or the next day it might, uh, you might have to make sure you're close to a plug. Uh, keep it in a secure place so it's not gonna fall off or get knocked off. Um, and if there is damage, sometimes we can fix it. Uh, if there's a, a broken button or a button's jammed down or, you know, other little issues, sometimes it's, it's not, we can, we can even get, uh, you know, replace uh, parts in it. So let us know and, and we'll see what we can do if it needs to be fixed. This would be a, a Chromebook from our side. If, if it's your device, then you've got to take care of it. Uh, tips for successful online learning. So here's some things just to think about making a private, some kind of public or private space. Some kids need more public space. It can, it keeps them um, uh, having somebody make with them helps keep them on task. Or if it's a private space, it, it, maybe that's better because some of them just need the, the isolation. Um, to focus, uh, a lot of people will pick a kitchen table, but again, it depends on the home and what works. And if you have a lot of kids, I realize you may not have uh, an ideal circumstance for this, but whatever you can do to create a space for them, I think that's important. Uh, turn off the TV and radio so it's uh, not distracting in the background. Maybe have them put their part, their cell phones in a you know somewhere a place where they won't just be on it at the same time and distracted. Uh, be present. Uh, if you're there and you can just keep them going and give them the reassurance, I think that helps a lot. Uh, and giving them encouragement when they do actually get something done or they stick through it and get it done, even though it was hard. Um, in Edgenuity, for example, the videos that they watch, uh, they have to watch the video. It won't let them fast forward through it. Um, they have to watch the video and stay through it and uh, stick with it. And sometimes kids get impatient 
watching a video. Um, it just let them know, hey, look at there, you've already gotten part of it done. You're almost there. Or you're halfway. Let's let's get the get just notch one more. Encourage them to make sure that they get uh, make the progress they need to make. And then um, just helping students think about what they are learning or talking to them about the subject matter that they are learning. I think that is uh, it's helpful. It gets them. Uh, discussing something that we'll do in the structured version but in the independent version this is really going to be on the learning coach and it could even happen with uh, you know a parent guardian in the structured version it can help students communication uh, there are communication tools within edgenuity such as there is a teacher chat function um, they the teacher can put notes on the bottom of assignments. They can also do an, uh, a voice uh, 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 audio comment on the bottom of an assignment. Um, they can put in, uh, we'll, we can make automatic parent updates that are daily or that are weekly. Um, it tells how much time the, the student was idle. In other words, they, were, they might've been clicking around, but they really weren't doing any lessons. Uh, and how much time they were actually in a lesson working. Um, so it tracks that and parents can have that data. Uh, we can, we'll send out emails. We are getting an email list as our, as our list gets more firmed up here. Uh, we'll start using that more. We'll probably use Remind uh, also to get phone calls out to parents when we have something that, that is really uh, pressing. But generally, we'll probably use email or text. Um, I put our phone number in there. You can call the phone number direct. Uh, that'll get through. And then there's a, a within the phone number there is a that you can uh, there's a directory and you can choose the directory to figure out who you need to get to. If you just go one, that's my desk, and um, I will get that to any secondary teachers that need it. But I think we'll we'll also have some other. In the directory, we'll have other possibilities there for teachers. Uh, schedule virtual meetings, you can do that, and you can schedule in-person meetings with us. So those are all ways to communicate uh, with our office and with, with the whole staff here. Teachers will also have their own email and communicate that way as well. The edgenuity experience, um, so, now let's get into our curriculum a little bit. Uh, and uh, the curriculum, when a student comes in, they're going to see all their classes. This is kind of what it looks like on their screen. Uh, and there are some things here. Let me see if I can uh, point to this. So up here, you see that there's a green right here. This green, it tells the student that they're ahead if they see that the blue over here says that they're on track and then red says oh you're behind in this class probably need to put some more time in there and get caught up in that class notice that the student is behind but their overall grade is 96.7 percent well that's on what they've done but that is but they they still if you went and looked at if they were to complete the course there's that, that completion grade or that that uh, uh, comp that comprehensive grade won't be 96.7 percent. This is just where they at where they are at right now, based on uh, how far into the course they've gotten and what they've scored. Uh, then uh, there are also uh it, it gives uh so this this gives all the classes i'm just thinking there's some oh next activity so if a student is on one of these and they want to know where to go what am i doing next they can just click next activity and that's the next one in line and that gets them going back in the course and working forward again so they don't really have to try to figure out what to do next it, it kind of leads them through that this is pretty small but but it it just shows the course map the student there there are these different pieces to the courses there's a warm-up typically which might be a video or might be uh some sort of uh 
um, maybe just a description that they read, a variety of things um, to get ready. It's kind of introductory material. Then there's there's instruction. Um, Edgenuity lots, uses a lot of short videos for instruction. Um, and then there is there might be an assignment of some kind, and then there's a summary uh, where they have to do answer a few questions in the summary, and then they go to a quiz or a test. If it's a quiz, and then down the line, they'll, eventually they'll have a test on a particular set of, on a unit. Uh, okay, and then inside of it, this is an example of a warm up. Um, there are uh, three tabs on the right. E notes is the first one I wanted to show you. So this tab, uh, they can take notes on their own as they watch the video. A student can click on that and make notes. It's it's important for them because on the quizzes they can use their E notes, um, and uh, it helps them kind of move forward. Helps them remember things, important points, and helps keep them focused. And it's highly recommended that they use the eNotes function. They can always go back to their eNotes. They save them uh, down here. They can save them and then just come back to them later. Advanced, they can go into, uh, they can bold and, and highlight and italicize and underline, things like that. Then the glossary. Uh, in the lesson, there will be some vocabulary. They can look up words, and uh, they can even type in other words that are not part of the vocabulary and look up the meaning of it if they need to. So the glossary is just a function there to help them learn vocabulary along the way. And then the transcript tells the student, basically, everything that's in the video is in the transcript. The interesting thing about the transcript uh, is, I don't. Uh, if a student's not a native English speaker, they can translate this. They can they can change this language to Spanish, for example, and and uh, read it in Spanish instead. They can also go over here to the headphones icon, and they can uh, have it read to them. They can highlight an area there and then click the headphones. And it'll it'll get read to them. So. Um, just depends on what works best for the student, but that's available. Some of the lessons, for example, science and math, um, will have a calculator built in or other tools, um, like a ruler or a, a straight edge or, or some kind of compass um, protractor. This happens to be a, three different calculators here. So on this one, there's a calculator, there is a graphing calculator, and uh, there is a regression equation calculator to put a best fit line to a set of points. So that's just an example of some of the some of the tools that uh, students have available to use. Tip for success. So here's just some tips on things again that students can do that will help them be successful. Take notes along the way. Uh, they could do it on their own, on pen and paper, or they can take notes. Uh, gonna let somebody in here. Uh, or they could uh, um, They can take notes what they're learning. Uh, let's see, there was something else about that I was gonna mention, can't remember what it was now. Um, I'll come back to it. Um, they can stay on, they can need to look at their progress report bar as I said earlier to make sure that they're on pace. Um, and that sometimes parents will ask, well, does my student need to do homework? Uh, well, they do if they're behind. Uh, they should do homework, try to get caught up and uh, stay on pace. They can work on the over the weekend if they need to, to get back up in a class if they fell behind. Or if, for example, a student was sick or a student was absent, they, they may have to spend some time making up that time. Um, 
ask for help. If they need help, they should talk to the teacher and uh, get it maybe another way. There is, uh, we have uh, retakes, for example, they can retake a quiz a couple times. After that, they've got to talk to the teacher. The teacher has to unlock the quiz again and uh, uh, maybe they need to review some stuff with a teacher and then go back and try it again. And we encourage students not to rush through quizzes, but to use their e-notes, uh, go, go slowly, be patient, and uh, uh, make sure that they've gone, they didn't rush through the material ahead of time, just try to get to the quiz. Um, last piece there is just avoid plagiarism. Don't be just copying stuff off the internet and pasting it down. If you do, then make sure you cite the source and they know they know that they're they're not claiming credit for somebody else's work. So those are just some tips for students to be successful in this program. Uh, so I'm going to stop there and go look at the chat for a minute. I see we have a few. And John's been helping. Thanks, John. Oops. Uh, I have to find the top of it. <laughs> oh. Let's see. I see John's been answering questions. Yeah, nine weeks or half a credit. So basically, they'll go through a year um, by the by the beginning of February. I think it's February fifth or sixth is the end of the uh, second quarter. They will have gone through a year of material then, but they're only doing four classes at the high school at a time. Now at the middle school, that's different. At the middle school. They are, they are actually going through the full 18 weeks uh, will be one half credit. So six to eight is different than nine, 12 because the middle school is not on a block schedule. Let's see, will high school students have access to electives? Yes, uh, so, uh, and Ryan, to be clear, it's not every elective, but, uh, uh, the AP classes, if there are any this year, I don't, uh, and then uh, I think there are a couple, um, and then music and uh, weightlifting, for example, shop, if there is availability in those classes and the cohorting works, they can have access to electives, but it will have to be based on geography and how the cohorting works. Uh, will we have a separate, we're trying to get a remind just for options. And, uh, we worked on that a little bit today to be able to, uh, uh, get options separated in, at least internally. So we could do something like that. So we are working on a technical solution for that. There's a couple of workarounds we have to do to make that happen. Uh, Thanks, John. It's true that students will have to make up their work somehow. Uh, and the, the, the uh, state also uh, says if a student is in the follow-on class and they pass the follow-on class, technically they pass the previous class from last spring. So there's different ways that that can happen. The, the ideal way right now would be for them to do some makeup work to make up that class. And they have to work that out with the high school and with the teacher, or we can help facilitate that if we have some students who need that. It may be that, that actually that we have the option already for them and that we enroll them in a class to, to make, that's a makeup. Um, but we have to work that out with their teacher from last year on a case by case basis. Um, so Laurie, I would just uh, send a, uh, send your uh, send your contact to me you can email me uh, put that in the chat you can you can email me and uh, I will 
address it. We'll see if we can figure out a solution. Or John, that works too. <laughs> uh, let's see, electives for six to eight. Again, I think it's more limited at the six to eight level. Uh, certainly, I think music would be an option. Um, I think it would probably depend on the rest, and probably by, by request. If you have one that you're thinking about, we can work on that. Um, the other thing I would say is now we've got an extra week We're we're, uh, we did training today with staff on edge annuity to get going. We have made all the classes I think that need to be made, maybe one or two that are still hanging out there. So we'll be getting kids in the next three days. Maybe, uh, we'll be getting kids enrolled and working on getting them registered in the system and then enrolled in classes and using and put into a schedule. And then we'll get that back out to parents and kids next week. Uh, school starts on the 22nd, if anybody missed it. Um, other classes. Uh, I would say um, right now, I wouldn't say that you couldn't do it. I think it depends on uh, how we can cover it um, and our capacity to cover it. Uh, if a student is independent, it'd be easier to do. If a student is need, needing to be structured, I think that'd be tough for us to cover that because our teachers are spread pretty, pretty spread out right now with a couple of classes in the same period. And I just, I just wouldn't want to put one more on them during that period. But if it's independent, we can certainly talk about that. Other questions? So uh, I'm going to hang out here if there are uh, no other questions. And then I guess we're done with this meeting. We will. Uh, we will communicate with you next week and we will get more, more information out. Uh, and uh, if it, I think if it was, uh, was it Anne, Amy, if you have questions, feel free to ask, kind of hit the end of our, our presentation. <laughs> Thanks for coming.